annealing of steel. Remember that steel is weird. Why? Because it has the solids to solid transformation, it behaves differently. Here, it's more in the grain structure that's produced. If I look at hot rolled steel or hot worked, or normalised with equiex grains is the key problem. I have got here Grains technically have five sides. I'll try and start drawing them that way. Like so. Let's say that's steel. But this here is perlite. I'll only put two grains of perlite in. When I cold roll that, I end up with the structure all shattered and deformed where it's been put through. But now I have the perlite sitting like that, along with grains of ferrite. So that is cold work. Now, if I just do a low temperature process anneal or a recovery anneal for steel, just to have it restore the properties at around about 400 degrees to 500 degrees centigrade, that perlite does not redissolve, it stays as perlite. Because you know that you need a temperature for a 0.2% carbon steel. That's 0.8% carbon. That's 723, that's 900. A 0.2% carbon steel to fully redissolve that carbon back into the austenite to reform nice round equiaxed grains again. I need to heat it up to a temperature of around about 860 to 870 degrees centigrade. So you need 870 to redissolve the carbon. We're only heating it up to 400 to 500 degrees down here in the two phase field. So that perlite still stays as perlite. All that happens is, so the perlite still stays as perlite. And then around it, we're getting recovered, recrystallized. A process anneal is recrystallization and stop. Nice, look at the difference in the grain size. A lot smaller grains. A process anneal, a recovery anneal is recovery, recrystallise, stop, maximum strength. Soft, maximum strength. But the perlite is still in those long pancakes because it hasn't gotten hot enough for the temperature to change. Let me get my head out of the way. It hasn't gotten hot enough for the temperatures to change, uh, for the um, perlite to reabsorb. So, steel is weird. Let me put that there, 450 degrees C. If, however, I heat it up to 870 degrees, and I hold it there for a day, and I leave it in the furnace and just turn the furnace off and wait one more day for it to cool, then I end up with recrystallised perlite, and massive grain growth. So I end up with two, three, four, five grains have five sides. Sorry, I shouldn't be drawing circles. Five, one, two, three, four, five, five. I'll make this perlite with wide spacing between it. 
because there's lots of time for the perlite to grow. Essentially we end up with that. So there's two forms of metallurgy. There's ferrous metallurgy, there's non-ferrous. Non-ferrous is a lot easier to understand. Steel metallurgy follows the basic principles with extra complications. I keep on saying steel is weird. No, we're talking two different streams of metallurgy when we're talking steels. That's a process anneal. That is a full anneal. A recovery anneal is just basically still you keep that original grain structure and only draw a little bit of it. And then in here it's just basically still got the same structure. You cannot see it with the microscope, the difference. You can see a change in the properties. A recovery anneal is just put just enough heat in it so everything can get least uncomfortable and stop. Full anneal. A process anneal. And a recovery anneal. While we're at annealing, there's a syllabus on annealing.